Hello and welcome to this Wise and Unity tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to post events in custom scripts in Unity with C Sharp. So to get started, what we'll need to do is set up our session a little bit. So I've already done a bit of setup. I've got my first person controller here from the Unity Asset Store from the standard assets set up with a wise project already integrated in with a sound SFX object good to go. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using an explosion sound effect. So to get started with the tutorial, what we'll need to do is go into your scripts folder. If you don't have one already, you can go ahead and right click, go create and folder and then name it scripts. And since I already have one, I'm going to go into mine. I will right click, hit create, C sharp script, and we'll call this wise host event. So next, what we'll need to do is double click on our script and open it up in Visual Studio. And so luckily for us, getting this working is actually very, very, very easy. To get it to play on start, we just need to write two lines of code. So that's what we'll be doing right here first. So the first line that we're going to need to write is public ak wise, whoops, wise event. And since I'm using an explosion, I'm going to call mine exp event. And that is our first line done. So we've just created a reference to a wise event. Now what we'll need to do is actually call what we've just created. So we'll do exp event dot host and in parentheses game object. And the reason that we put game object in parentheses here is so that our code knows that when we call this event or post it, I should say, we want to play it at the location of the game object th that this script is attached to. So once we've done that, we are good to go to have our sound play on start, at least when it comes to our coding. So we can save that and close out of it. Next, what we'll need to do is actually add a game object to attach this script to. So I'm going to right click in my hierarchy, go to 3D object and cube. Then I will just drag this up to my plane here. And then we can drag our script onto the object. Now you see it pops up down here and we have this nice drop down with a list of our events from wise. So I'm going to click on play explosion. So now we should be good to go to have our sound play on start. So go ahead and save your unity project and you can hit play. And there you go. Our sound plays just fine. So this is incredibly useful for if we want to integrate our sound and program our sound into much more complex systems. So say for example, we want our sound to play when the player walks through it and only when the player walks through it. We don't want it to trigger when an enemy or a bullet or something else passes through it. We can do that very, very easily using our code. So first what thing we'll need to do is go to our cube and the box collider section and make sure is trigger is clicked. So now this is no longer going to collide with anything. It will just be checking for objects passing through it. So once we've done that, we can go back into our script and cut out this line of code that we've put in start. So we'll get rid of that. And then what we'll do is we'll create a new function and we'll call this oops, void on trigger enter. So now what we'll need to do is check for whether or not the object passing through our trigger on our cube is the player or not. So we'll do that with an if statement. So we'll do if other dot game object dot tag equals player, then we can go ahead and paste our code right there. So basically what we've done right here is said on trigger enter, if the other object entering our game object has the tag of player, then we want to play our, uh, our exp event. So we can go ahead and save that, go back into Unity, 
save our project once again, and we can hit play. So the first thing you should notice is that our explosion no longer plays on start since we moved our code. And the second thing you'll notice is that it no longer plays actually when we're going through that. And it's because we have not attached our tag of player to our player controller. So we can go into our tag, drop down, and hit player, save once again. And then now our sound will play. There we go. So you can see how game objects without the tag of player don't trigger our sound. So say the first time we were an enemy, it would not trigger the sound. But now that we've added the tag of player, it works just fine. So you can hopefully see how posting events in custom scripts is extremely, extremely helpful. And this is a very simple way of going about doing it. So I hope that it helped, and I will see you all in the next one.